In my profession as an educator, very often I actually come across students, students who are super entrepreneurial driven or startup driven. And when they're actually starting out their entrepreneurial journey with their company, the first thing that they actually want to do is promote their business on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube. And because I'm a digital marketing professor, the first thing they come up to me and they tell me, sir, we're launching our startup. And do you know anybody who can help us with Instagram or Facebook or promote ourselves on social media? And at that time, I'm actually looking at that enthusiastic entrepreneurial student and I don't want to kill that student's joy or enthusiasm, but I really want to ask a question to that student and everybody watching this TED talk right now. That is, does every startup actually need social media to promote their business? You know, and while I ask this question, I want you to do a very simple activity. I want you to look to your left. Come on, look to your left and look at all the products available on your left. Look to your right and look at all the products that you can see on your right. Come on, pause for a second. Look to your right and look at all the products that you can see. Like right now, I can see a pen, I can see a table, I can see a mask, I can see phone, I can see AirPods. Look to your top, look to the bottom. Literally do this. Look around and see all the products that you can see around you. And now I can guarantee you something. And that something is that 90% of the products that you just saw while looking to your left, right, top and down are not purchased from social media. In fact, none of those buying decisions were influenced via social media. I hope I'm correct about this. I'm pretty sure. Most of us don't go to social media to buy something. We go to social media literally, absolutely to chill. And just to move on from the story, I have another story to tell you, which will add value to the first statement that I just said. And this story is about me in 2015. In 2015, I had just launched my educational institute. And just like a young entrepreneur and a startup enthusiastic guy, the first thing I did is when I launched my educational institute is I actually started promoting my business on Facebook, you know, Instagram, that time Instagram wasn't as big, but Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, I started promoting my business everywhere. Now I did all these promotions and through one of those promotions that I did, I actually got an email. I got an email from a university in Mumbai, a really large university in Mumbai. And what they did was they invited me to come down to their college and give a talk to 500 fresh 18 year old students in the R university. So I accepted the offer. I was super excited. I'm getting to talk in front of 500 people in an auditorium at some really large university in Mumbai. I accepted the offer. The students were 18 year olds, fresh students, naive, young. None of them knew anything about digital marketing. So I was actually very excited that they don't know anything about digital marketing. I accepted the offer. I went to the auditorium. And that day, I gave a really nice 45-minute speech. I spoke about digital marketing is this, that, this, that, the other, and I, and I very enthusiastically attempted to convince all the 500 people in the audience that your future should be digital marketing. And I'm hoping I convinced many of them. Actually, I'm pretty sure I convinced a lot of them to take up digital marketing as a skill. And honestly, my biggest hope was that after I gave that 45 minute speech to those 500 people, I was hoping that some percentage of them or a small number of them would actually in the next 10 to 15 days come to my institute and actually sign up for a course at my place. Guess what? That didn't happen. In fact, at all. I was super shocked. I couldn't believe it. 500 people. I gave a speech, they never knew digital marketing. I convinced them to do digital marketing and now nobody even shows up my institute and signs up for a course. And that day I said, you know what? I think I need to go back and study marketing. I did lots of research and I came across this model created by St. Elman Lewis in 1898. 
it's a model which describes how a customer goes through an entire journey before buying anything. It's a proper customer journey, okay? And when I started studying this journey, I found out that this customer journey is broken up into four pieces. At the top is awareness, in the middle, interest, under interest is desire, and after desire is action. Let me explain these four to you very quickly. At the top is a stage known as awareness, where let's just take an example, there are one lakh people. These people don't know anything about your product, about the offering, about your brand, about even if such an offering is available in the market, they know nothing. Because you do some marketing to these one lakh people in the awareness stage, 10,000 of them roughly move to a stage known as interest. This is a stage where they slightly know about the product. They still may not know about the brand, but they know, okay, something like this exists. They might buy, may not buy, might buy today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, five years later. Now, because you do some marketing to these 10,000 people in the interest stage, roughly 1,000 people move into the next stage known as desire. Now, this stage is a very specific stage. In this stage, the customer has reached a point where he or she has decided that he or she will buy a product. Let me repeat, they will buy a product. What I mean by that is that they have decided that I will buy a phone. Now that phone could be an Apple, a Samsung, a Vivo, Oppo, Xiaomi, any. Or they've decided I will buy a laptop. And the laptop could be a Dell, an Acer, a Lenovo, a Samsung, it could be any. Okay? Now, that means they have decided that they're going to buy something. That's the stage they've reached. And because your brand does some marketing to these thousand people in the desire stage, roughly 100 people move to the last stage, known as action. Now, this is the stage where they're just about to buy from you. They're looking up your reviews. They're looking up little more validation. They're asking their friends, have you heard about this brand? Have you heard about this company? Is it good? Is it bad? Should I actually invest? The last 100 people, they're just about to buy from you. Now, this is the model. And traditionally, if you follow any marketing book or if you follow any marketing guide, you know, they will say that if you want to do marketing, you got to start from the top. You got to do awareness, and then because of awareness, someone will move to interest, and then desire, and then action. But this model was super flawed in my case. What happened in my case? Now, let's go back to that journey where I actually went to that auditorium, spoke to 500 students out there, and here's what you need to know. Those 500 kids never knew anything about digital marketing before I came and spoke to them. Which basically means I'm gonna plot those 500 students to the stage known as awareness, okay? They knew nothing. I spoke to those 500 people. They were all moved into the awareness stage and from awareness, probably some of them moved to interest, some of them moved to desire. And I was wondering that if they moved to the desire stage, why didn't they buy from me? Because something changed. Here's what happened. I went and interviewed a few of the students and I asked them, hey, look, why didn't you join my course? You know, I found out from somewhere that you're doing a digital marketing course. I found out from somewhere actually that they're doing a digital marketing course. Why didn't you do it for me? They said, sir, you gave a brilliant speech. We were super convinced that we should do digital marketing. But here's what happened. When we actually decided to do the digital marketing course, we went to Google and we typed best digital marketing course. And we didn't find your name out there we found somebody else's name out there. And because we found somebody else's name out there, we went up and went ahead and signed up with that institute. And I had a moment of eureka at that point. And I realized that if I am going to do awareness, it can actually cause harm to me. Pretty shocking to just hear what I just said, right? If I am going to do awareness, it can actually cause harm to me. You know why? Because I went and did awareness to so many people, I moved them from the awareness stage to the interest stage and from the interest stage to the desire stage because of my speech. But when the customer actually moved to the desire stage, he or she went and did a Google search, want to do a digital marketing course. And at that stage, they didn't find me. They found my competitor which basically means that I 
by doing awareness help my competitor get sales and and that was shocking to me that was super 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 shocking to me and that's where i realized that all of traditional marketing when digital was not alive when television marketing and when billboard marketing and when newspaper marketing needed to follow the old concept awareness interest desire action but digital marketing is a very different concept you can actually hope and wait that everybody around you goes and does awareness about different products and services but when the customer moves from awareness to desire that's where you and your brand should be sitting and waiting the minute the customer has decided to move to the desire stage that's where your brand needs to be available and that's where you need to present yourself and tell the potential customer that hey look you want to buy this i am available try my product if you like it buy it i'll give you the best offer what i intend to say my friends is that all of us today are spending so much time trying to promote our business on social media to so many thousands of people and random people but you need to ask yourself that question number 1 is that really getting your customers number 2 are you actually talking to a customer who wants to buy a product which you're trying to sell most likely not if you move away from social media and you come to google search or any other search engine the best part about that is that the customer goes to the search engine and types what they actually want to buy that means the intention of the customer is super high and because the customer has gone to a search engine and typed want to buy a phone or laptop under 50000 smartphone under 30000 or house you know apartment rental apartment under you know 1 lakh the customer's intent is super high and that means the customer has already entered the desire stage without you doing any awareness without you doing any marketing the customer has an intention and the customer has already entered the desire stage and most customers today when they enter the desire stage they go to google and they type that my friends is known as the desire stage and that is where you're supposed to present your brand probably on the first page of the search engine your brand needs to be because when you're there you're going to get a customer much faster much smarter much cheaper and way more efficient and here's the best part once they type something on google and then they actually come to your website after they may not buy something from your website in the first shot obviously nobody goes to a website and instantly purchases something especially if it's a laptop or a phone or a house a, a high ticket thing but once they enter your website and they leave your website that's where social media begins and i'll tell you how social media comes into the place today you go to any website let's take for an example you go to amazon's website or flipkart's website you check out a product the minute you check out a product and then you exit amazon's page or flipkart's page the minute you open your instagram or your facebook you will see an ad a sponsored ad of the ditto same product that you previously saw on amazon or flipkart I'm sure this has happened to everybody watching this TED talk, right? And just like that, by the way, this concept is known as remarketing. And just like that, when a customer searches something in the desire stage, searches for a product when they have a high intention in their mind, they'll click on the website, they'll come to your website, may not buy, but then you need to advertise to the same customers on Facebook, Instagram, you know, YouTube or any other platform and keep haunting them stalking them on social media till they buy or die <laughs> but that my friends is modern digital marketing where you don't actually need to spend so much time on awareness you need to be smart find customers who have a high intention on buying and only talk to those customers you know what this actually does it saves you a lot of time because in the first case you're actually going to a random customer knocking on his door telling him or her hey look this is my brand you have a problem you should buy this product from me that's option 1 option 2 there is already a person who has a problem who wants to buy a product similar to what you're selling go find that person and talk to that person 
you have two options go convince a customer from 0 to 100 to buy a product or go to the second customer who's already at point 50 which means he or she already wants to buy a product and convince them faster so you can choose option a or option b all i'm trying to tell you is that modern digital marketing is not like traditional marketing and in modern digital marketing you catch the customer at desire thank you